I am Dr. Prashant Gautam and today we are going to discuss about destination planning. In this unit, we will learn about destination planning and destination life cycle. And we will also have a look on key elements in destination planning. We will take care of these topics with the help of two case studies. Dear learners, in a destination planning, there are few key elements. A common sense way to deal with the objective administration is a staggered methodology that tends to the achievement of an objective from various headings. This includes various degrees of the travel industry arranging such as promoting and the travel industry the executives of an objective and having a strong vision for future the travel industry advancements. Here are five fundamental strides in the travel industry arrangements measures decoding the short and size of the travel industry and how it will develop for the objective investigating to locate the best reasonable bearing for the future advancement of the objective an expensive degree key way to deal with the travel industry advertising creating key arranging documentation teaming up conquering and drawing in with key partners including stakeholders in the destination planning process partners are a basic aspects of the objective arranging measures for most partners they need a travel industry the executive plan based on solid key rules that have been explored altogether and depend on strong investigation. It is likewise essential to give partner a solid feeling of that administration. Partner need a very much characteristic arranging and the board cycles that depends on solid data induced to them. At long last, partner needs to know the group and realize that the travel industry, the executive plan has a dream for the objective's future and the authority to rejuvenate it. This is at the very center of the partner commitment measures and is fundamental for building a common vision and empowering coordinating effort. Vital planning documents in the destination planning process. Vital arranging archives in the objective arranging cycle should lay the foundation for the travel industry development and the board for the objective. For the travel industry, the executives, this implies utilizing a wide focal point to get ready for the drawing out headings of the objective. Key arranging records ought to include a very much plot vision for the drawing out course of the travel industry that boards the recognize key needs. An investigative arrangement did recognize the information and examination expected to draw in partners in settling on educated choices. Danger appraisals that distinguish what are the dangers and weaknesses that may influence the destination's objectives, travel industry and how it reacts to such an emergency. Destination's life cycle is an important aspect in this Regard. Butler's proposed that the most tourist resort go through a six stage model and he called this the tourism life cycle model. It stated that the most tourist resort start on a very small and get bigger and bigger until stagnation occurs. Within the six stages, the following happen. Exploration. A few hardy and adventurous people looking for something different in a holiday find a place that is special in terms of its culture, nature, beauty, history or landscape or any attraction. There may be no tourist services available and local people will not be involved in tourist money making activity. The second stay in this destination life cycle is involvement. When local people now start to notice that there are increasing number of people coming to their area. They start businesses to provide accommodation, food, guides, transportation, etc, etc. The stage three is about development. Now big companies, they start to see the emerging potential of the area as a tourist resort and therefore they start to invest money in the region. They build large hotel complexes and sell packages holidays. A package might include travel or accommodation or food and excursions. This makes the number of tourists swell dramatically and massively expand the number of jobs opportunity for the people in the local region in both tourist related jobs and in construction and other services. Now the fourth stage is about consolidation. The local economy is probably dominated by tourism at this stage and many local people will make their money from this type of industry. However, this can remove people from the other industries such as maybe farming or fishing or other cottage industries and these industries can suffer a lot. There will be a continued building and expansion of the resort but some of the older building will start to become unattractive and a lower quality client base might result. Now the fifth step in this life cycle is technician. Competition from other resorts, rowdiness and a loss of the original features. For example, if it had a green grade beach but 
that is now crowded and full of rubbish can cause the resort to stop growing. The number of people going level off then start to decline, threatening local businesses and services. Stage number six is the decline or rejuvenation of a destination. From the stagnation point onward, there are two basic possibilities. One, the decline or various forms or, or rejuvenate means regrowth. Decline can be slow or rapid and regular visitors are replaced by people seeking a cheap break or day trippers. Rejuvenation involves a cash injection from either a private company or from the government to create a new attraction within the original resort to boost its popularity, such as the Pleasure Beach or at the Blackpool or like this. Dear learner, in this part of the unit, to study the concept of destination planning in a better way, we shall undertake two case studies. One, an international case study, and it will be of a Gorbat in Cambodia and second state case study is about Goa in India. Let's take first case study, it's about Angkor. The Angkor, the Tourism Development Strategic Plan 2012-2020, the first understand the baseline situation. The case study of Angkor represents some of the key threats and concerns which World Heritage Site across the world may also have to deal with and to manage. When Angkor was first inscribed in 1992, it was immediately placed on the list of world heritage in danger due to threat from conflict between Cambodia and the Vietnam. It was only removed from this list in 2004. And although domestic conflict was no longer a threat to the site, a number of new issues endangering the site had become apparent. Angkor is an extensive site which in recent year has been visited by over 3 million international and domestic tourists per year. The impact of so many visitors is one of the key threats Angkor has been attempting to manage since its inscription. However, numbers have only continued to steadily increase. Furthermore, Angkor is also an inhabited landscape, a fact that has presented difficulties for those parties wishing to present an environment that fits a certain view of the World Heritage Site and how it should look rather than the reality of a contemporary and lived-in setting. Another difficulty comes from the location of the Angkor being in Siem Reap, one of the poorest provinces in Cambodia. This creates a set of circumstances that makes local residents more inclined to place emphasis and importance on the basics and immediate economical potential of Angkor rather than any longer term value and developmental potential it holds for the reason. And this is the condition with all the third world countries. The comparative wealth of those who visit Angkor is also a draw for those living in other regions of Cambodia. It has been estimated that almost half of those working in the accommodation sector are not Siem Reap resident but seasonal workers who travel there to cash in on tourism. What did it do? Managing heritage at Angkor requires managing tourism. It has been inscripted in Tourism Management Plan 2012-2020. The involved party recognized that unless management dramatically changed to meet the contemporary needs of Angkor and its population, the site would be damaged beyond recovery. It has also been recognized that Tourism represents both an economic necessity and the biggest threat to the longevity of Angkor. So it was decided a comprehensive tourism strategy must be developed in order to minimize threat and improve the long-term viability of Angkor as both a destination and a place for people to live. In response to this, the Angkor World Heritage Area Tourism Management Plan 2012-2020 TMP under the Angkor Heritage Management Framework, HMF project was developed. Strategic priorities, dealing with the rapidly increasing number of tourists who visit Angkor, reducing negative impacts of tourism, previously understood primarily in terms of uh, conservation at the expense of all else, improving tourist understanding of the local uses of Angkor, both as an inhabited area and continued religious significance. The other one is creating a more cohesive tourism industry that adheres to particular practice and standards. Next is providing better opportunities and financial return for local residents. 
what works? The final draft of the MP is a long and detailed document comprised of six broader aims or initiatives addressing the four strategic priorities. Promoting positive visitor experiences, reducing site impacts, partnering with industry, providing benefits for local people, improving governance and engaging with stakeholders. Initiative specific strategies are defined to fulfill these aims and each strategy is composed of individual steps that are planned to take place in the approaching months and years. Although the broader strategies and steps they involved are in respect to different final goals that are a number of common themes that the strategies they share like communication, collaboration, delegation, limitation, examination, diversification and conservation. And these themes can provide a template for other World Heritage Sites managers to consider in relation to their own sites rather than the specific strategies and steps which have been defined with Angkor in mind. Now, what was tough in this case? The issue faced by Angkor have received much attention and criticism for perceived failure in management. The scale and complexity of Angkor means there is no one easy solution and a number of measures have been undertaken in past to deal with conservation and local residents. However, many of these efforts have failed due to a lack of communication between the different bodies responsible for Angkor, a lack of understanding on behalf of residents regarding the policies of World Heritage and unwillingness to implement any system that might reduce the number of tourists who represent the region's primary source of income and the desire to conserve above all else. Consequently, the strategic priorities for Angkor mentioned above have remained the same for the something. How did they get by? Various stakeholders involved, including the Royal Government of Cambodia, the ICC, and the wider conservation community recognized and communicated the necessity for change and management of the growing risks associated with tourism and development at Angkor Wat and Siem Reap as a destination, a tourism industry stakeholder workshop and a community monks and NGO workshop were held in Siem Reap in March 2012. Together, all the stakeholders they involved provided feedbacks, drafts and changes prior to the adoption of the final draft of the Tourism Management Plan or TMP, aiming to make the industry more sustainable and beneficial to the conservation of the World Heritage Site, the local community and tourism businesses within the destination. What lessons others can take from this? When developing a tourism strategy, for a World Heritage Site, consider what the site has to offer even beyond its World Heritage status. This is very important. The current World Heritage List citation for Angkor does not include natural value, nor does it recognize Angkor's role as a spiritual lived in landscape. But these may be of equal interest to tourists as the magnificent architecture and age of the site as with many other sites discussed in their toolkit, the local community must be a key consideration and this include local resident, tour operator, business owners and anyone else who may be affected by the presence of the World Heritage Site and tourism the site draws. Setting up lines of communication should always be one of the very first thing site managers work at prior and during the conception and implementation of a tourism strategy. Dear learners, now let's have a look on a national case study of Goa. If one has a look at the destination life cycles of Goa's beach-centric tourism industry, it has traversed a couple of stages. To begin with, the exploration stage commenced in the 60s when the flower children having accidentally stumbled upon it, discovered the Tourists paradise for posterity. North Goa coastline villages of Anjuna, Kalingut, Baga in particular offered its virgin white beaches to those 
founding fathers of today's tourism industry. Beside the sun, sand and surf, the wild shoreline also provided the much required privacy and seclusion to lead their way of life with no question raised. In 1961, visited from as many as 39 countries, totaling 1,439 persons and 10,422 night lodgings came to Goa. With a guest at the Goa's doorstep, it made demand in terms of food, accommodation, medicine, music and other drugs. Thomas toddy trappers, fishermen and the residents in general had new opportunity knocking at their doorstep. Invariably, their involvement in the tourist activities was inevitable. In fact, State Bank of India opened its branch in the state. At Kalinguit, tourism once injected in the system implied development of infrastructure, facilities being provided by government and big time, big industrial houses, star hotels and other stakeholders gradually started taking interest in it. Over the year, Goa witnessed a steady rise in arrival of both foreign and domestic tourists. Tourists have been flocking here for various reasons. But the sun, sand and surf, synonyms with fun and frolic, has fascinated travelers and tourists the world over. It is witnessed involvement and development of the state to meet the demands of the guests. The initial 90s experienced slump due to the financial crisis faced by the country. But with the opening of the economy and the subsequent information technology boom triggered a rise in the popularity of the state and translated into an increase in the arrival of the domestic tourists which spilled over into the new millennium. One observed that the flow of the foreign tourists over the decades have been more or less steady for crossing 0.05 million limited. Since the year 2003, Goa saw a record increase in number of tourists as in the, that year only, total of 532 chartered flights, some in bringing 1,40,000 foreign tourists. Goa touched a figure of 2 million by December 31st, 2003 only. The discussion about management of tourism in Goa started quite early. Kamath Smith, in 2010, Dr. S. B. Patkar in 2004, in their presentation on impact of tourism on Goan agriculture and environment claims that Goa is in the developing stage and cautioned that later it will lead to stagnation and decline. In their words, in the long run, people, the local people involved in tourism industry will have to face competition with large business houses dealing in tourism products. And if stagnation or decline occurs, then local pop people will suffer. As switching back to agriculture will be difficult that time. N.K. Piplani in 2001, they reveal that a region like Goa, a city like Shimla or a leisure sport like Bhatka Lake have reached a maturity level. They no more require promotion and have similarly exhausted their carrying capacity. The carrying capacity which included infrastructural, environmental or social impacts. Their problem, on the contrary, is of retaining their image, checking the decline and doing away with the negative impacts of the tourism. Norona Frederick in 1999 said, Industry believes that Goan tourism has not yet reached this saturation point. Even the authors like Sobade, in their column for the Times of India, the question, has Goa lost its groove? And conclude, Goa has after all lost its mojo, its magic. So also Bradley Michel in 2010, a British tourist who has been visiting the state for the last 20 years in his letter to a local daily claims Goa has lost it. To her counterpart who offer a much cleaner, safer and more sociable destination. If foreign tourists are wary of destination, domestic tourism are bitten by the state's holiday image. Now let's analyze this situation. Destination life cycle has many critics, however, as a framework within which to view the development of destination and as a way of thinking about the interrelation of destination and market evolution, it provides many useful insight. Chris Cooper, Fletcher John et al. in 1994, Chris Cooper in 2002, they maintains that the approach adopted for destinations will be dependent upon the destination stage on the life cycle. The life cycle stage is rather difficult to compute. Now, one may statistically know the position. Cooper adopts growth indicators such as rates of volume growth, 
ratio of repeat to first time visitor, length of stay, visitor profile, expenditure per head and visit arrangement packaged or independent to identify life cycle stage. Because the understanding of this will help in making a destination plan. Goa sure still fascinates tourists around the globe, but it is just a matter of time for the state of Goa propagating beach centric tourism to reach the saturation stage. Even if we go through the literature, the, their review brings to the light the fear expressed in this regard and the options open to face such eventuality. British arrival have definitely declined. In fact, the traditional foreign tourists are moving out of the state and are being replaced by new wave of tourists namely like Russian and other East European and domestic tourists, thus offsetting the decline and putting off the stagnation stage. To retain these new guests and inject sustainability to the industry, it is about time proactive measures are adopted by the government by consolidating the resources. In this regard, it is imperative to market the state beyond its beaches. This may be possible by introducing new forms of tourism. One such option being village tourism. Each taluka has a number of villages. Such villages in the state can be distinctively documented with respect to its history, culture, face, flora and fauna and the same can be packaged and promoted to the existing and the newer markets. The new destination can be located at various stages on the life cycle destination so that these novel destinations can avoid the pitfall and the mistakes committed by beach centric tourism villages namely harried, haphazard and chaotic growth of the industry. For this, the participation of the people, private and public bodies in, is essential. This coordinated gesture will aid to chart out the intricacies involving the infrastructure development and restructuring of this significant industry of the state. The returns would be injecting a new lease of life to the land of good times by proper planning and implementations, thus avoiding the mistakes of the past. A long term vision in this regard is the need of the hour and the destination life cycle model may not be an infallible tool, it sure can prove an effective one. Dear learners, to sum up, we can say that the understanding of the concept of destination planning is very vital for the planners because every destination they behave in a different manner. We have to plan differently from the different destinations for the different attractions. Say for example, the planning for a castle in Indonesia will be different from the planning for a castle in United States or maybe Britain because these all three destinations they behave in a different manner. So the destination planning is of utmost importance. Thank you.